I mean, it's been a while, hasn't it? It's been, it's been two weeks. We, we yeah, uh, well, we missed last week, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, well, the last time we probably spoke about it was when we did the food challenge. Yes, right. Um, yes, yeah, <laughs> so that that was that was funny, wasn't it? Because we both managed to do more than we thought. Yeah. I will, uh, I, I will definitely say when we had the original conversation, you mentioned five guys and how it was easier to do that. You're bang on me. Like the the way that I got the calories before was. Oh, yours hard. was way. I even said that <laughs> to you on the day. I'm like the one yeah. you done before was way harder. Yeah. Yeah, it really was. Um, the way that I felt then, and bearing in mind as well, my appetite was better because it was like four weeks before. So my yeah. appetite's been gradually getting worse. So, mate, the, the one that you and I did was way easier. And actually, what the camera didn't show on that um, was I probably could have gone more, but we had shit to do and I didn't want to feel like shit. Um, but I, and, I still felt like I... more the choices because we obviously let the girls choose for us. So that had we gone and been a little bit more like, yeah, yeah. Actually, gone and been a little bit strategic with the foods that we could potentially get in. We could have gone 10,000 10, easily, I reckon. Oh, I don't know, mate. I, don't know. <laughs> I reckon you could have, right? So I, I will definitely hold my hands up. You can eat more than me. That's a fact. In one go. But uh, I feel like I probably could have got maybe like another thousand. Maybe. And then maybe you could have gone more. Maybe if we had time, though, because say if you have another hour. What I realised is with those types of things, if you don't get the calories in soon, it's almost it almost gets harder. Like, yeah. do you know what I'm on about? So when I did the first one, I did like on my own. I was kind of okay at the time. I was very very bloated. Anyway, about an hour later, I was like, oh fuck. Like, off or camera. I think if we trained, because you know when you train, you actually get hungry. So imagine if we'd gone and done a session, if we'd gone and trained like legs or something. Oh, imagine that with that big bloated belly. Oh, I did. Oh, no, no, before that, before that. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I did that. If you remember on the YouTube that I put up, I went and trained back up. I went in like road, 200 kilo. I was like, over fucking. No, but train before that. Train before. So wake up, get like a light meal or like a shake, go train, and then after that. Yeah. Would probably work. Do you watch, uh, do you watch any of these guys that do eat trains online? I do, yeah. Do you watch, I watch quite Electric? On TikTok. I watch quite a lot of them on, on TikTok. Um, just like random guys like trying to attempt like the Eddie Hall fifteen thousand yeah. calorie day of eating. I think that should that could be quite fun to, to try. Yeah, agreed, agreed. Do, do you watch um, a guy called Eric the Electric? Yeah. So he he would have like ten thousand one go, then he'll go for he'll literally literally run twenty miles, and then come back after right. a twenty mile run and do another. He's like okay. a, he's like a distance athlete, you know, the cycling yeah, yeah, and running. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, he'll he'll literally run twenty miles. I'm not saying twenty miles is in like literally twenty miles. It's like fuck. How the hell do you do that? I think we should try the Eddie Hall challenge. Actually. Not challenge, but to him, that's that used to be like a normal day of eating. But to us, it will be quite a lot. I remember seeing on his uh, there was a Netflix documentary wasn't it, called Eddie. I don't know if you ever saw. No, that. he done it on his uh, he done it on his YouTube. He done it on his YouTube, just like oh, a normal what he used to eat. On a on a normal basis, as a so it, like he'll start with like a fry up and then like carry it on throughout the day. It's, um, shit loads of food. But what I mean is, his documentary was actually when he was doing it. Oh right, okay. And it was yeah. So you actually saw it happen in real time. And he used to like um, he used to add in like just a tub of ice cream just just because, uh, and he would just put fucking like loads of like calorific shit on everything. Like, see, I don't know about you, but ice cream would make my appetite worse. So Definitely. And you just shit out. What I mean is, yes, this one meal, I'm like, sweet, I'm ahead by a thousand because I've just got this tub of ice cream. But then I'm not hungry for the next four hours now because I because the ice cream is still stuck in my stomach. And it's like so I think I agree. It, you know. Yeah, I feel I feel like ice cream is all comes right out, just comes right through me. Like it, not only does it fuck my appetite, but it literally comes out. Like, so I'm not, I'm not absorbing those nutrients. So if I were to, in fact, I used to do that. Probably five years plus ago, in my off seasons, I was like, well, I just need to make up some calories. I'm a bit low mm -hmm. today, so I don't have an ice. I would, I don't have cookies, ice cream. There is, for people watching this, if that's how you think you should get your calories in, but if you're in an off season, you're struggling. My strong, strong advice is don't bother. Like if your calories are coming from that. 
let's say you get an influx of like 1500 calories or 2000 calories just of that what what of that is going to be of value to your body Nothing. it's not is it you're, you're probably better off just going a bit under that day saving your appetite and then going in better tomorrow yeah do you know well, what i'm saying just get up early just get up early yeah. so you can get meals in that you know i think that's that's the thing with bodybuilders like especially in the off season you tend to like slack off you take wake up later you go to bed later you know yeah, you're, you're getting off. up in, in nice and early is it sets you up for for, for the day so much better yeah, i had a client today um to a guy that i mentor and he was uh, telling me about his clients and he's got one of his clients on 2400 calories and the guy was saying how he was struggling to get it in like, he's not a bodybuilder he's just a you know, lifestyle but, like, if you're struggling to get that food in it's because you're not creating a large enough window like say say for example you skip breakfast then lunchtime you have like a sandwich and then you have a coffee in the afternoon maybe a chocolate bar and then you go home and then you've got like fucking 2000 calories to eat that's probably not a wise move you know, well, I don't know. I could do. I could. Do, I could do more than two thousand calories easier than me. Hey, listen, listen. But you're not normal, and nor am I. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bearing in mind, this is a guy who's like eighty kilos, barely any muscle. Do you know what I mean? Like an average dude. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, by the way, this one, if he watches this, it's for AJ. What is it? Yeah, he came up to me at the universe, uh, and he goes, "Why do you fucking eat on your podcast? Could you not just wait to the end?" <laughs> <laughs> no, I fucking could not because then we because then we fall back, fall behind on meals. I'm Thank already up, actually. I'm half an hour behind because I had a little bit of a later workout. Like had people chatting to me at the gym, so I ended up being late. So you know, we we got to eat now. Um, you have to, mate. I, I, there's been times where we've done this podcast and I've loved it and I've not eaten, and it's fucking up. I've stuck there. Yeah, so, yeah. No, no, no. You know, by the time you end up, and then you got to cook it, and then. By the time you eat it, because you got to, people don't bear in mind, like, they're like, oh, yeah, but you eat at, say, six o'clock. Yeah, but what you don't account for is it takes me like 20 minutes to fucking eat this. How, how, was, how was your appetite going on right now? Fine, fine. You still, you still like, there's no issues or whatever. You're not like, no, because I'm actually a little bit under because we're going to go on the holiday sort of mid July, probably. So I'm, I want to trim down a little bit. Where are you going? Probably Turkey. I haven't, yeah. like, I'm not going low, low, just max, like, slowly, like, reduce my, like, rice by about 20 grams or things like that. Not, like, you know, still, like, 120 grams of rice per meal raw. So it's still a decent yeah, amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, low enough that you're going to be, like, not bloated. Yes. Yeah, I don't want to be, high like... High enough that you're not, like, cutting, you know? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Okay. So, um, and, like... No, like none, like nothing. Pretty much off plan for the next five five weeks. I'm not. I'm gonna take out all my off plan meals, which by default that's gonna be like because my yeah. I take a piss on my off plan meal. <laughs> yeah, I can because, imagine you do. Yeah, because the thing is, all week long, I'm I'm stick to my diet. Like I stick to my. I do not cheat. So then that one meal that I get, I eat what I want. Like I go pretty pretty hard. You're a McDonald's guy, aren't you? Yeah, McDonald's, but then. I'll I'll go like above and beyond that, like with <laughs> it's after that, and you know, I, I I guess I feel like I've spoke about this quite a lot. Maybe not even on the podcast, but just in general. Like, I am just not a big eater. Like I just don't get it. After that initial post show like craziness is gone, my appetite is raging post show. Of course, it is. after that, I'm just I don't care. I don't see how people are so into food still. Like when I have an off plan, yeah. right I'm like. And it's not just that, but I'm hungry for my like beef and rice. I'm happy to fucking eat. That. Yes, 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 yes. And you see, like that's plain. That's plain. It's just beef, like no, oh. no spices, nothing on it. So, and salt and pepper, that. a little bit of hot sauce for me, and that's it. Right, that's it. not yeah, even yeah. hot sauce, and that's it. I'm happy to eat that, and I'm hungry for it. And I look forward to that. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy to eat it, but I still want it. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, like, someone was like, "Oh, can you do a full day of eating?" And I'm like, "Well, it's gonna be pretty fucking boring." <laughs> yeah. I got sent. I got sent your story. I got sent your story. But you know, um, Dale Stoney. Yes, Dale. Dale went. Is is this the twenty twenty three version of fish and a rice kick? Fish and a rice kick. It's Pretty literally much. you. You are literally the new version of. Mm. I watched. <laughs> yeah, but, like, yeah, it's pretty what else boring. do you eat as a, as a bodybuilder? What, what else do you yeah, eat? Yeah, but listen, but listen, listen. You need to remember that not everyone on your your story is in the know. A lot of them are just sort of casual, right? 
So when they see someone of your level of muscularity doing that, it's a bit of a like, oh, okay. You got to remember, like, not everyone has your, you know. So yes, it might be boring, but fuck it. That's, that's what we want to see. They want to see what you do to get like yeah. that. The way I think of it is, it's much easier to wake up, put all your rice in the rice cooker, cook it for the day, right? Say 500 grams or like whatever, cook it, and then it's done. And then you just scoop it out, cook your meats, and then eat it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I'm a packet rice guy. I genuinely prefer packet rice. I think it tastes so good. Love the packets. I like the packets, but I think with the, when you cook it and it's like well cooked, it's nicer, it's nice. Maybe Plus, I'm just this, like massive rice cooker that takes up like fucking kilos of kilos of rice. Uh, oh yeah, I like it. You know, like so you tear out the packet and after it's been cooked, and oh, um, and then you put uh, it's jasmine rice, and it literally comes out as a lump. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then you you, you you chop it with a spoon. It's so Wait, easy to eat as well. Oh, just salt on top of that. That is and nice. That jasmine That's rice. Genuinely nice. That jasmine rice is like two grams of fat and like ninety carbs. You got like yes. 90 grams of carbs in a pack. Because normally it's like 75, you know? Yeah, yeah. I always think of rice is like 75 to 80, but that one's higher, isn't it? Yeah, that was like 90. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're like extra, extra rice, I don't know. I no, it's because it's stickier. But, so is it specifically that type of rice? Is it like, for example, you know, jasmine rice that you buy, like in, is that the same? Or is it just that, the packets? I think is, it's is it the it same carb be- content. Obviously, they've got to put like certain other amounts of of stuff in there to preserve preservatives. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, sometimes I find when I eat that rice over the other rice, it can be a little bit harder on the stomach because of all that stuff that's inside it. Um, I've been exclusively in the packets for like three years now. So I don't even know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. I think. Yeah, I mean, it's probably the same. It works out a lot cheaper, but. Have you seen yeah. the, the new Uncle Ben's? They do them now in two, 225 gram rice. It's not two, not no 220 grams. Not oh, so it's grams. more than more than double a pack. What do, what do you mean? What, what is it? You know, it comes in 250 grams. Yeah, but that's the cooked way, isn't it? Yeah. What what do, what do you mean then? What does it come as? So. Right. What's a standard packet of rice? It's the normal Uncle Ben's are 250, but it's cooked. Like no, but they've changed it now. What? They've got down to 220. Oh. That's Why? what I'm trying to say to you. Why? I didn't even notice it. I was tearing a packet of rice because I because I've got loads of packets just in case sometimes I'm out, you know. I've always got like loads of packets just in case. And and sometimes you want a little bit of a different flavor. Yeah, yeah. And um I tear the, I, I look at the packet and it says 220. Yeah, well, like okay. For some reason, I looked at the back and it says like um fifty grams of fifty grams of carbs in the packet. I'm like, surely that can't. Oh be shit! Good. Yeah, well, yeah. they've short changed it, mate. Mm. That's weird. I didn't. I didn't even realize that. It smaller. Yeah, they've made it smaller. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Maybe it's like a thing to tackle uh, like obesity in the UK or something. I mean, smaller Maybe. portions. If you don't even realize that it's smaller, but it's you know what I mean. Could be. I don't know. Yeah. That so, rice anyway, is expensive. I was like two pound. For one of them packs, two. Oh my god! Something like that, isn't it? Uh, well, you buy the cheap one, the cheap as the one. I, I, buy, I buy the as designed. They're like, uh, I think it's like sixty p a pack. I like sixty p, yeah. Which yeah. is still no, compared to compared to like when you buy in bulk, it's still expensive. But... I tell you what, the best jasmine rice is the Tesco Tesco jasmine rice uh, in the green pack. Mm-hmm. In that like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, it is. You're right. That's the best one. Yeah, that's the best one. Yeah. But mate, anyway, I was going to say, uh, what's the update with you? What's uh, where are you at, mate? Since I last saw you, not a lot. Same old training. Have you, have you joined Dan yet? No, not yet. Not yet. I've sent him um, all my bits last Tuesday, so I need to still. I'm still kind of waiting for him to um, get back to me on that. We pretty much talk every day, but it just hasn't been like um, about. We haven't really spoke about that for some reason. But um, it shouldn't be, it shouldn't be, yeah, it should be soon, I reckon. But I've kind of, like I said, because of that, I've kind of just started. I'm like, right, I need to kind of start a little bit of a, of a tidy up, just because I've not got long. I don't want to drop masses and masses of weight, maybe about ten pounds. So, have you have you come to a conclusion whether you're gonna is is it this year done, commuting wise or next? What was what, what it? 
I mean, I think so because it. Not, so you know what? I still kind of want to, and I see people that like in prep, and I've got clients in prep, and I'm kind of like, well, I'll kind of. But equally, I'm a bit like, do I want to? Can I? Can I be asked to like go through that shit again? You Definitely. know, I I think you, it needs to be the right time. Like, if you're anything like me right now, I'm kind of comfortable not being. You know, like waking up at like two, three in the morning. Yeah, I can't, I can't be asked for that again. Like, I'm not in the mood to do that right now. I'm not. Um, to do it twice in a year, it's a bit like. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, I've done twice I'm... in a year quite a few times, but not this year. I'm not a hundred percent certain yet, but more than likely. And if I do, um, it will start off as like a a tight, you know, a tidy up diet where you kind of just like get going. You get a bit leaner, and then and then I can be like, right, let's let's go for like six weeks or like whatever do you know do you know what i think a lot of people make a mistake with prep right they they view they like they make too much of a big deal of it right and what what i mean is when you start your diet don't even think of it as a thing just think of it as your calories are reduced and like what i'm trying to say don't even label it Mm -hmm. just reduce your calories and continue going to the gym continue just continue on it as normal and what I'm trying yeah. to say is you can probably get through the first four to six weeks. Zero discomfort. Is it like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, do, yeah. Like, sure. we, I think a lot of people, like, before prep, they're like, oh, seven days till prep, six days, five days, what, they, they really build it up. And then when it begins, it feels like this really big thing that's, like, hanging over them, you know? Um, and I just think you sort of set yourself up for failure. Like you've been sent to prison or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a set, yeah, it's a sentence that you have to do. Yes. Mm-hmm. But my advice would be just try and just be a bit more casual about it. Just it's okay. Just reduce your calories, do a bit of cardio, and eat your plan. That's it. Well, you I know? think with mine last year, it was like because when we started, I, I had a, a huge reduction right from the start. Right. So that made a difference because it almost like from day one. It felt like such a like big difference because it went from yeah, like was... six thousand calories to like two thousand or whatever it was. I guess that's when it comes into it, which we covered quite a lot. It's like don't get too sloppy in off season, and don't go too extreme too soon. So it's yeah. two things, you know. And choose a show date that's like sensible. For example, you know, if you're fairly out of shape and you choose a show that's like eight weeks away, <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of extreme, isn't it? So, yeah. And bodybuilding, by its nature, is fairly extreme, what you're doing to your body. But you want to try and minimize the, the level of extremity. By making it extreme from day one, and say you do a 16-week prep, that's a, that's a lot of extreme. You know what I mean? Whereas if you just casually ease yourself in like from a really good start position, you shouldn't really get to the extreme part until maybe like four or five weeks out. Four or five weeks of extreme dieting is way more manageable than four you know, four months. You know what I mean? And I think with you, you did it fairly extreme for fairly long. Yeah. You know, you know I, mean? I feel awful because, I mean, you remember, like, we were both like, yeah, how are you feeling? We we're like, both like, both were like, yeah, fine. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, weirdly it wasn't. But I think you have that, like, eight to ten week mark where – you kind of have like that, like adrenaline rush where you're getting in shape and you're like seeing changes and you're like, yeah. But then towards the end, you really burn out. Definitely. definitely. With me, uh, I think it might be genetically. Genetically, I, I, I'm I, fine with lower calories. All of it's genetically. Whatever the fuck it is, uh, eating slightly less food suits me. So I don't really experience discomfort until right at the end. Until that point, I'm, at, I'm just, I'm kind of fine. Um, but some people, and I'm sure you come across it too, clients, they're like starving hungry from like straight away. And you're like, Ugh, oh God, it's not going to be good. Yeah, I find it's more like the training as well, because my training from like the, from like six weeks on, like six weeks into prep started to turn into in a bit shit. Yeah, but it was because of how you do it, wasn't it? Yeah, which I think that makes a big difference because I feel like I feel like that made a big difference because my workouts were nowhere near the level they were like the, in the first six weeks to the last six weeks. Well, the interesting thing will be when you do another prep. 
and you do it in a different manner, you know? It's going to give you a very different experience. Mm. You know what I mean? I do think I need to start prepping a better position. Like, the way I am now, I could probably yeah, yeah, start yeah. in real, in a... in a Because I'm, I'm still fairly in a fairly decent shape. So I can still see all the lines, you know? So if I was to start prepping now, like... Yeah, not not getting too far from this point is, is vital for you, isn't it? Vital. Yeah, I like two fifty now. So, mm. you know. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Um, so we haven't um, spoken about the universe. And our bet that we had on. Yeah. Where is it then? Well, I need to see yours as well. <laughs> uh, no, do you know what? I'm going to get it done. I've obviously got the septum. So I'm going to get it done probably next week because that, that takes fucking ages to heal. Okay. I'm going to get that. I can't believe that. I fucking... I won the actual bet and then I made a shitty bet about food. About food, yeah. Yeah, for fuck's sake. Uh, but yeah, no, we've got, we got to get it done. Uh, we have to do it because there's no point in making bets if you don't follow food. Oh, yeah, no, of course. Hey, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, no, uh, do you know what? I actually do want this anyway. Oh, shit, really? Yeah. Well, we, we should have done something you didn't want, you motherfucker. <laughs> well, well, no, because at, at the time, uh, you know, at first I was a bit like, mm, but now that I've got that, I'm like, yeah, I'll probably it'll probably look good. I've seen quite a few people get it, get it as well. So that it, I think it looks good. I think, uh, yeah, I think you'd put the rest of it. Okay. I think you'd suit that better as well than the ear. Uh, I've got a really big nose, haven't I? So, I don't want to draw attention to it. Nah, I've got some big shiny thing, and people are like, oh. Do you know what, actually, ever since... So I I had surgery on my nose. I don't know if you know that. Yeah, you said, yeah, yeah, I remember that. That was, like, recent. Yeah, and ever since then, it's actually made my nose fatter. Really? Yeah, so in photos, I have a photo taken, and I'm like, oh, God, like, it's made it... Uh, you, you just... It's it's in your head. No. No, because there's all the... Oh, man, I keep getting cramped. Um, there's, like... So they plugged a hole in my nose. My septum had a hole. They plugged it, but what they've done is they put like, this like membrane, like this, with thin plastic either side, and then they've stitched it. Okay, so I've got plastic, septum, plastic, and some stitching. I can literally and what feel does that. Do? Uh, I actually don't know. What I do know is they put a, a septal button in. Okay, it was quite literally looks like a button, and they've just plugged the hole. And then the, the membrane over the top, I guess that's to protect it. I don't know, right? Um, but I can literally, I was going to pick my nose, but I can literally just feel the, uh, I don't know. So, feel the plastic, yeah. So now, when I have photos taken, like, probably not going to be able to see, but trust me, like, it's gone, like, change the shape of my nose. Huh. So, I've got a, I've got a follow-up appointment soon, so I'm going to have a word with them. Yeah. But Maybe also, they... mate, yeah. also, I've got, uh, I've got other surgery coming up this week. What, the gyno? Mm, like, I'm going in on the 20th. Where, where where is it? Uh, in Manchester. Okay, that's all right then. That's nice and close. Perfect, perfect, mate. So, um, for people watching this, uh, gynecomastia, because I've already had a couple of people inquire, like inquire, like ask me, um, what I've got a deal going on with the company that I'm working with. So, if I advertise them, talk about them, um, they they give it to me for cheaper. So that's what's working. Yeah. Out. That's so, good. so um, yeah, just having the lumps removed from behind my nipples. Um, they're quite unsightly, especially as a bodybuilder. I think it can really hold you back. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm getting done. People yeah, just, not just in a, in an aesthetic way, but also with the things you can run because you know you can use more tests and you you can use certain compounds that you probably couldn't couldn't. And it's a, from a health standpoint as well. Having to constantly run anti estrogens that's not good. That's you're absolutely right, mate. So. Um, one of the things that I've got, one of my problems is high cholesterol. Mm. And running the anti-estrogens is a problem for that. It, it mm. elevates your cholesterol. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I was actually having a conversation with a friend of mine this morning. I've, I've never really run above 500 milligrams of test for the last, I would honestly say like four years, five years maybe. Yeah, yeah. So to, the ability to go higher than that is going to be interesting. I don't know if it's going to be that different, but maybe. I think it is. Um, I I find it is, and you you taper it up like you don't just go five hundred a thousand, 
but you build yourself up to that a thousand, I think it makes a difference. Yeah. How, what's the highest test you've ever been? Um, I'd say like a, a thousand, a thousand fifty. I think it was. Um, we went with Louis on like last year up to like for for like extended period of time. It was one, like one thousand five hundred or one thousand and fifty. One thousand and fifty. Yeah, yeah. The way it went was um, because it was like three hundred. So you do. 300, 300, 300, goes 900, and you take another 150, makes 1,050. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was taking yeah, three, three and a half, half, three and a half yeah. mil. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 1,050. And that was like, we tapered it. We started again, we started at 500, then it went six, 750, eight, nine, and then 1,050. So what's your take on a, a cycle that was, that is lower test and higher other compounds? Higher test and lower other compounds. What would you say would be more beneficial? I think it depends what you get on with, like what what you feel better on. Because again, there's people that take a thousand mg of test. I think milligram to milligram, like it's more or less gonna be like, well, taking a thousand mg of trend is not the same as a thousand mg of primoy, but more or less, like if you're equating the dosage of the similar compounds, I think it's pretty much the same, but. Certain comp, certain people just feel like shit on test. Um, let's say, let's say you you feel lethargic or you break out or you just don't like how you feel on it. Well, then you know it's better to take less of it. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, oh yeah, the, there isn't a black and white answer. It all depends, right? Yeah, for me, I find I actually prefer higher test and lower other stuff. I'm, I I can't comment personally on a, on, on a personal level. I can't really comment because I've never done that. Mm -hmm. Never. In fact, I don't think I've ever really gone much above 500 in my whole life. Uh, maybe like 750. I don't know. But, um, it's more as well for like how long you've done it for. Because people go, yeah, I've done two grams. For how long though? They're like, well, two weeks because I felt like shit. Right, so you haven't. Mm. You need to look for an extended period of time to actually know what's what. A bit like, you know, like with training splits. You know, when people say, oh, I did that split. It's like, well, you, you did it for a little bit. You didn't yeah. really do it. How do you know what's doing what? Yeah, yeah. Give it time, yeah. But well, it's the same thing. Like, I think you find the split you kind of get on with best and then, but you need to run it for like six months plus. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you, you know. don't know. And do you know what? And then even then, do you fully know? Like, because unless you're fully in shape, you don't know what you've grown. Yeah. Do, do you know what I'm saying? And it kind of matters what you were eating for that time as well. Do you know what I mean? I also it, think like, because I was try kind of trying to explain, actually, that person that I was talking to at the gym, they're like, well, what's the, like, the, the, that was a question. What what do you think is the best split? Because they asked me, like, what my split was, and I said to them, like, the bro split. And they're like, well, isn't it better to, to train things more frequently? I'm like, well, is it is it, though? I'm like, look, you've got X amount of volume. If you split that across more workouts, well, they're less, you're, per workout, you're, you've got shorter sessions. If you do a push-pull legs, but you've got to do chest, shoulders, and triceps, well, then that's going to take you longer. My push workouts used to be about two hours long. A chest workout is about an hour long. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, th I, I don't know where I sit. I don't know what my answer is. If someone were to say to me, is it better, if you've got a lagging body part, is it better to hit it really well once or well twice? Like, so basically increase it. I actually don't know the answer. I think my preference would be twice, but I don't know if that's definitely the right answer. Because you my could make it once. My... Yeah, well, I think there's a strong argument to say hit it well, properly, allow it to recover properly, and then hit it again after seven days. I think that's a yeah. really good argument. I think it depends how you're wired mentally. So for me, the way my, my brain works is I'm like, right, like let's say I'm, I'm, I'm doing a, a bro split and I'm like, right, chest is on a Monday. That means. I need to like obliterate chest because I don't get to train it again. Right. I get to smash up however much volume I want. And I'm like, it doesn't matter if I do four extra sets for chest because well, I don't have to train it again this week. Whereas if I know that I've got to train it again on Thursday, I'll be like, oh, maybe I, should, maybe I need to pull back a little bit today, hold back a little bit. That's how my brain works. So if I'm on a, on a twice a week, I'm almost like holding back both sessions a little bit. And I think that would be wise to do. So basically, 
you couldn't do the same amount of so let's say on your one session of guest you did 15 sets let's just say for example and then if you wanted to do it twice a week you do 15 and 15 you wouldn't do that would you no. you would have to break it down you'd have to make it more bite size but even with the set intensities even with the intensities even like warming up i'm like oh I better not like waste too much energy. like the way i am as well as if i know that i've just got a train chest i just go and train until i'm like done <laughs> oh do you know and, and, I, and I i don't disagree with that mentality but you know what the older i've got and stronger i've got the more risk of injury there is so i feel like for me to make it worthwhile in terms of stimulation i just risk injury too much oh don't get me wrong i'm not doing 30 sets no but like let's say Let's right. say your main your main movement was incline barbell, break. incline dumbbell, incline dumbbell. Okay, yeah. Go in like seventy five to eighty kilo for like somewhere between six. Oh, to I can't seventy five to eighty kilo. But but my but I, I, that would be how I, that's my working weight. But do you need to do eight seventy five to eighty kilo? Well, that's my, my well, argument is fifty five to sixty kilo is plenty. So then, yeah, I guess that's that's just so. What I'm trying to say is that. Because I know I'm only doing it once or seven days, my my mind would be like, well, I need maximum, uh, for I, I'd need to put maximum force through my chest. Now I definitely don't just agree on load for the sake of load. Yeah. But if I know, but I know if I'm only going to do it once in that week, I would probably want to load up. Well, the way I do this now is I start with flies or some sort, and then I go into the press. So I do, I do two press movements. So I might do. An incline, like a low incline dumbbell, and maybe I'll do like a flat smith or something. That low incline dumbbell is like my heaviest, hardest, hardest. But let's say I start and I do the twenties, and I'll do twelve reps. Then I'll do the thirties, and I'll do tw twelve reps. Thirty-seven, and I'll do twelve reps. The forty-fives, and I'll do twelve reps. Then I'll do the fifties and twelve reps. By the time I get to the fifties and the fifty-fives, whatever I'm, I'm going to use because sometimes I train at pure, and they've only got like up to fifties. So I got to train like that, otherwise, you know. Okay, so so what you're trying to get at is you're accumulating volume up to the top. Yeah, and at that point, your last set is a failure set. But because you're failing, does it really matter if you're lifting the eighty kilo dumbbells or the fifty kilo dumbbells? You're failing. Ah, uh, okay. Well, that's that's a that's a tough one. Again, I don't know the answer to that because there's two things I want to say to that. Number one, yes, you're accumulating volume, but in my mind, a lot of those sets are junk sets. But hold on, bear with me. Please. Yeah. They're not junk because you're 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 not you're not. How much stimulation are you, someone of your experience level, going to create with thirty kilos? I'm not looking for stimulation. I'm looking for exhaustion and creating that mind muscle connection to the to for the exhaustion to then result in me you like, feeling my chest better on a fifty kilo dumbbells still accumulates volume, but then I get to fail with less weight. Okay. So then let me ask you this. What would be your opinion on if I uh, – the annoying thing is too many variables. Okay. Well, the let, thing is, right, so I, I, we're talking about chest. I train chest like that because I have to. I train yeah, chest yeah. like that because my chest is torn. Legs, I don't train like that. Right. So hold on. Hold on. <laughs> before, before we move on, I want to talk about that. Uh, before we move on to – because – I could easily go into another avenue there, right? What I want to say is, so let's say I do a set 70 kilo and fail at 10 reps. Uh -huh. You do a set and you fail at 50 kilo. Are you saying that those two, because they're, they're, they're those sets are equivalent to one another because we both fail at 10? I'd say so because they're both failure. Yes, but what one that let ten times seventy is seven hundred kilograms, and one's a five hundred kilograms. So volume wise, it's not yeah. But I don't know. If, I don't know. If I agree with that. How if that works that way? Because I can say, well, I'm I'm accumulating volume, way more volume with my working up sets. So I can say, oh, I've done thousands of kilos with those sets. If we're just talking about pure okay, training. okay, but none of them are failure sets. They're just whatever. So my point is, okay, go by your logic then. Me doing a 70 kilo for 10 is the same as a guy who is doing 25 kilo for 10. He he reaches failure at 10, and so do I. Do you think that those sets are equivalent to one another? No, but 25 kilo is very different to, ah, to this 50 is the point. Kilo. So the logic falls apart. 
I don't think so because 50 kilo is still, let's say I'm able to do 60 kilos and you're able to do 70, say, right. because I'm, I'm, that's kind of, I'd say 60 kilos is where, well, that would be the equivalent for you for your 75. Cause I can't do the 75. I could probably do the sixties. But so I think just backing off 10 kilos, I can actually use my chest a lot more. I know that if I start pushing the 60 kilos, it's going to be shoulders. Cause I just, I know that. Cause I know that. Cause it's just how my, like, it, I know that I don't connect with chest that well. So for me, I, I'd rather do that and accumulate more volume and actually use a little bit of a moderate weight that I can control and actually use the chest. Then. Okay. Now I agree with you. Okay. So I, my, my chest will probably get the same stimulation. If not more, if I went down a bit. Okay. So now let's take it away from chest. You can connect with your back perfectly fine. Right. So can I. So now we're on a level playing field, right? We can both connect just fine, even when going heavy, right? Would you say that me doing a seven-plate T-bar is the same as you doing a five-plate T-bar? We both no, failed. I think, I think back's a bit different. I think back, you, you want to pull some heavy shit with back. Back's a little bit different, I think. I think back and legs is those body parts that require... Because there's so much going on with the back, right? Back is like, there's so many supporting muscles. You've got traps, erectors, lats. There's so much going on that I think back can take on load. And even if you're, let, let's say, even if those last few reps on the, on that on that barbell row are a bit shruggy and, yeah, I'm using my traps. Yes, yeah, so what? I want to grow my fucking traps as well. Okay, well you know? then, but then the same logic for your chest. You, you want to grow that whole upper shelf, that fucking... Oh, uh, yeah, but it's the shoulder that we're training. And we're shoulder dominant, so we don't we don't really want the sh the the shoulders to take over necessarily. But our chest to shit. Okay. I think I don't even necessarily disagree with what you just said. All, all of it actually again. What I'm trying to get at. I'm I'm trying to say load matters. Just because you reach reach two people reaching failure is not necessarily the same. Look, load matters when you can lift the thirty kilos. When you can lift the thirty kilos. Try and get to the fucking fifties, then it fucking matters because you because that's what's going to put on that muscle. But I think when you're at the seventy fives, yeah, every now and again, sure, every now and again. But I think every workout, and that's going to batter your joints because seventy five fucking kilos per hand, fuck me, that's heavy. And I think mentally as well, if I know that I've got to go to the gym and pick up the seventy five kilos, I don't know. I'm that the stress and the anxiety that's going to give me. Yeah. And it's probably going to be like worse for me than if I know if I'm thinking, oh, 50 kilo dumbbells, I can do the 50 kilo dumbbells anytime easy. Yeah, you, you're not going to tear anything 50. I mean, no. yeah, yeah. Well, you might, but a lot less likely yeah. compared to compared to the 70s. Like 70, that's fucking, that's some, some, some serious fucking way. Especially, I mean, and again, taking like the the way you're talking about the um, the, the load, I might do that on the machine. So, for example, on a, on a flat press or an incline press machine, where well, I know it's safe, but with the dumbbells, I think that's quite risky to do. Hmm. I, I think I again, I kind of know what you're saying, right? So when I when I know that I'm going to go up heavy, what I do is I'll load up my shoulders more. I'll, I'll, I'll with the dumbbells, I'll like angle myself and I'll make sure my delts are loaded because so I know that if I have the 75 kilos too far out, outstretched. I'm risking injury too much. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I just think, wow. and it, it becomes a tricep press. It becomes a, it becomes a shoulder and tricep press at that point. I think definitely does. I think um, I think probably what I'm getting at is like, how many people do you know who are really, really big, who are getting that way with like 25 to 40 kilo dumbbell pressing? It's rare. Oh, no, I'm not so saying to, that. To, but... to, to, to gain like true mass, I think. You need to be pressing 50 to 70. Sure, but I think those guys that do that, they're not pressing that every session. Because we see that on Instagram. Let's say Josh Law, and he's pressing like 90 kilos or like whatever. You think he does that every fucking workout? I doubt it. We can ask him. I doubt it. He does do it a lot, doesn't he? Yeah, and he has got some of the thickest muscle you could find on any human being. Yeah. But is that every is workout, though? Good question. Good you know, because because again, like we see, I, I think we've all got those big lifts that we've posted on our on our 
on our Instagram, and you're like, oh, you're like, oh, fucking hell, this guy, Ryan can squat 310. But how many times have you done that in your life? Yeah. You know? But, yeah. Do you know what? I, I will, hand on heart, I used to bench four plates every week for probably six months. Yeah. I, I, that was but four plates, but, but your max was five. Max was five, correct. So, so, so taking on four, taking off forty kilos is the same as being able to press the eighty kilo dumbbells right. and pressing the sixties. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, so, I was very, I was very rarely at two ten to two thirty. I've been there maybe three times in my life. I get there and then I come back down again because because mm-hmm. I have to. Yeah, and and again, I think like pressing those like one rep maxes is good because it gives you a yeah. it, uh, provided you're safe gives you that like ability to know where you're at if you've gotten stronger but like doing it all the time how we used to I don't know I wouldn't be able to do that now I, don't, I, I, I can't believe I had the balls to do it I know I can't, I can't believe how confident I was it's madness I would think nothing about doing a, a 180 to 200 bench I'd literally like it was nothing to me yeah, if, if I was to put on one eighty now, I would I would have to sleep all like for the night before. No way. No, I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna fucking tear it. I'm gonna tear. Do you reckon you could even do it? Yeah. Oh, you could you could do it. Yeah, I, I know for a fact. So, uh, I, I mean, still... one eight is not that much, right? One eight is not that much. Yeah. But... So I, I I put on one forty uh, <clears throat> not that long ago, and I did like eighteen reps, one forty, and that's that's without even bench pressing. Yeah. I, I think know that like I know that one seven five on there, you're gonna think, ah, oh, piece of piss. But because yeah. it's four plates and it's like one eighty, you think, oh fucking hell. It's, it's it. I, I did a uh, incline the other day, one forty, and then I did one fifty for like twelve, mm, ten, something like that. So yeah, I think um, I think one eighty flat would easily be there. I'm just too nervous. I'm just too nervous. It's like it's not worth it. I, I think like if if um, a, we've got shit body part. Volume actually does help. I think higher volume does help because it it trains you to like actually try and use your chest more. Yeah, that yeah, definitely. Because yeah. like I I I know for a fact my quads I can I can obliterate with a couple of sets, but that's because like from set one I'm locked in. My quads are in. I don't have that with my chest. It's very difficult for me to to do yeah. that. Yeah. Do you know what? <clears throat> this isn't anything new but it's just something i've been thinking about a lot and i remember hearing it probably 10 years ago but it's, i've just been doing it a lot recently basically what i do now with chest because it's a lagging body part i initiate the movement like so basically you know like when you're in the fully lengthened position uh-huh instead of initiating the movement with like chest shoulder everything tricep everything instead what i do is i'll um initiate my chest so i'll literally contract the chest my arms start to move in and then once I'm already contracted, then I push through. Right. Does that make sense? So basically, so what I know exactly is, what you're talking about. Yeah, but you can you can't do that with a 75 kilo no, dumbbell. No way, no way. So it basically probably takes away 20 percent of your power, probably. But it the contraction is like quite considerably different, right? So yeah, like so for people watching, I hopefully that made sense. But like literally, so I'm in the lengthened position here, and I'll initiate my chest and then press through. Mm-hmm. Rather than getting down to the bottom and then going up, that's almost like momentum. Okay, so instead, initiate your chest, then press through. Yeah, like yeah. Bring it across. Another oh, thing yeah. I do is I don't lock out. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because then, then it kind of like goes into tricep. Yeah. And it goes. Um, yeah. Dumbbells. And it's stacking that joint because you got to remember like, at the top, if you stack the joint, it's like wrist, elbow, shoulder. Yeah. You're stack. You're like the weight's on the joint. It's not on the muscle. But again, so, but again, it's very easy just to let go of the chest as well when you're at the top part of the movement. So when you come up, it's very easy just to stack the joint, as you say, and, th- and then this be soft. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Instead, come up, so initiate the chest, come up, and then literally contract at the top. So now my chest is hard, as opposed to just being there and soft. What that would do, it would just help you keep contraction through the muscles. So instead of, so let's say you rep at this speed. Okay. how much tension per rep is there? Maybe half a second. Whereas mm-hmm. if you're doing this and then contracting and then you're pulling down, controlling the eccentric, you end up making it into like a three second contraction. But again, There's, that's why I'm using the 50 kilo dumbbells and I still do that with 50 kilo dumbbells. But not, 
If I went 60, I don't think I'd be able to do that. Makes a lot of sense. Okay, yeah, based on that, I, I, I fully agree. There's too many variables. I, I'm a bit annoyed at myself for asking that question um, about do I think that 50 and 70 is the same? Because there's way too many variables. Oh, it's not It's not the same. Of course, like, of course, it's not the same. It's different, but I don't think it doesn't work. No, I mean, if all if everything is identical in terms of form, hypothetically, then the 70 is obviously better. But I think that not many people can do that type of form with 70 kilo dumbbells. Yeah. Like, and again, like we're talking you, like 0.1 percentage of people. <laughs> and and again, Mike, I, I think that's helped because my chest was worse last year than it is now. Um, so I think that's helped because for the longest time, I'm always fucking heavy, 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 heavy. So I think now trying to change that a little bit, yeah, has, definitely. you know, um, but then again, I know with like shoulder presses, for example, I can go heavy on shoulder presses and I feel all the fucking shoulder. No, yeah, fucking you, you, yeah, your shoulders are way more dominant than your chest, though, eh? Well, yeah, so now I need to work out how to bring up my chest. So I think you and I. And people like us, we need to just focus more on fly movements, converging. <clears throat> okay, so we need to think about this movement. So like shortening the pec rather than just pressing this way. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Because you know when you look at guys with like, shorter arms, they press them. When they press, you can see their pec like shorten. Oh, for sure. With me, that doesn't fucking happen. So James Underwood. Train with James Underwood, mate. And he flings weight around. But like, he's very strong as well. But there's not that much like full control. It's just fucking boom, boom. Yeah. But I can see his chest. His chest is ginormous. Ginormous. Same as Craig. Craig fucking, yeah, yeah it's just madness. Their ability to connect their chest is on another level. On another level. Yeah, yeah. So it's just it's just that. It's for, it's just trying to find a different way of and and I think because the chest is so far behind for both of us, it, it probably is catching up, but it's still behind and because everything else is improving it still kind of looks like it's yeah, not yeah, 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 definitely that's what i look when i look at my physique from several years back, like uh in lockdown i was looking at my physique and i remember taking those videos in my back garden and in my front room and lockdown one the first one so it was like april 2020 yeah and i remember looking at my physique and thinking fuck and i was so happy with how i looked i look back now and i'm like oh man like, yeah. that's not it's not anywhere near as good as I am now. And one of the main things is my shoulder and arm development, right? But also the double-edged sword of that is that it's actually thrown my physique off more. Now my arms and belts have grown so much more in the last three years that actually it kind of makes my physique almost worse in terms of balance. Yeah. My chest is kind of the same. But my, my arms and belts are like considerably bigger. I was like, oh, fuck. That's the thing with a lot of arm dominant people. Like, if I when I look at my state shots as well, when I hit those front double biceps, you can just see my arms. It's like nothing else. It's like when you see a, a guy with like massive arms, and they just have. You just think, oh, this guy just has arms. Yeah. And we yeah, all yeah, like yeah. someone like that. Yeah, definitely. You know when they just stood there and their arms are hanging down and they've got a massive tricep sweep and like, mm. uh, it's, the, it's just, they, they've just become about the arms, haven't they? Yeah, which I think for a gym physique, that's great. I oh, think for, for gym sure. physique, that's all you want. Definitely, mate. Yeah, you know, even like if you're out out with your fucking missus or whatever and you're just in a t-shirt with your arms out, it looks amazing. It's really good. Yeah. But, you know, for for the stage, it's not it's not so much. That's why I don't see the guys with the biggest arms always winning, you know? No, definitely not. Do you know what I was thinking, though? Like, the kind of physique that always wins, it's not even conditioned, you know what it is? Well, it's partly conditioned, but what I mean is it's it's separation. So you can get a guy who's super conditioned, but there's not amazing separation. So when I say separation, I mean, like, Andrew Jack. Yeah. You know, like everything is just completely pronounced and separate from each other muscle. I think on an app, like when you see that kind of physique, it always stands out. You might get someone who's like, like that, you, know, you know, those like shallow abs, like they're very, very lean, but they're not like, um, they're not big indents. You know that's how I meet mine are. Mine are fucking shit. Because they're shallow. Because they're shallow. Because I didn't ever train them. I think, I think, Sometimes it's genetic, mate. 
I do. Yeah. I, I like e so even if you start doing crunches and fucking all variations of, I don't think you're going to have those really deep to outs. Probably not. Well, I don't oh, know maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, like, maybe I started to train them and they're starting to like they started to poke out now with at higher body fat, whereas before. Right. Okay. So wouldn't... maybe it was just because you were flat as well then. Because ultimately they're a muscle, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now I train them, and when I train them, I can feel them like contract. So you know when you because when you train them and you kind of like put your arms on your let's say you're doing like a machine crunch, put my arms up like hands on my stomach, I can kind of feel all all of them in there. Whereas before I didn't. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, training them will definitely help to a degree, but we are obviously limited by genetics. But hmm. the kind of physique, like I say, like you could get like and like sometimes people get funny about this shit, but I'm gonna be honest. You know those black dudes, like African genetics. In my opinion, they are the best genetics. I only, like for me the type of physique that I like. That's it. Exactly. So this yeah. is not, and it's nothing about prejudice. It's nothing about racism. I no. just like that's just what I, I really like the look of that. Like that bubbly, separated physique. Okay. Yeah. You could get a white dude who's got that um, white guy. What's it called? What's the James Holland's head expression? Uh, white guy grainy or something. I don't know, whatever. You get white dudes who are like super conditioned, really thin skin. Oh, Caucasian dry. Caucasian dry, thank you very much. Um, yeah, so you get Caucasian dry versus African bubbly. Yeah. For me, there's only one winner. There's only one oh, winner. Yeah, Which, sure. look, look at like, it's Hollington versus Samson, basically. Who do, who do you want to look like? Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. I think it's not just that, but it's just how their muscles insert as well. That yes. we just don't get that. We just don't have that. Um, very rare. Very rare. Do you see that on a, on a on a Caucasian dude? Very rare. There's a few guys who are quite bubbly. So when else we mentioned them, like you know, we're doing the best body parts. You guys like how round and thick their muscle is. You know, uh, we said about um, Jordan Gomez. It's pretty round and thick and bubbly. Yeah. Harley Judge's arms, Dan McNabb, like these guys, they're like really rounded. It's quite rare for the, the thing is though, I think with those guys, like Dan, take Dan for example. Dan's like what, 270? On on stage, he must be like 240, 250, I think. Right. So so that, that's what I mean. So like take 270 in off season, right? You get guys that are like like Keon, they're like 200 pounds. Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. they're like they look fucking twice the size of, you know, so it's kind of like with like twice the size of someone that is maybe 250, the likes of, of like, say you, for example, you at 300 pounds in the off season compared to him at 200 pounds in his, in his off right. season. It's like, what the fuck? It's like, you're absolutely right. They look, they look more, they look more impressive with like 50 pounds less easy. Right? Yeah. 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 That's so true, man. And they got like small waists, very pronounced ab midsection abs. Tiny joints, long muscle tiny bellies. Joints. Yeah, the, the joints, thing. right? So like their wrists and their elbows are tiny. Mm. Whereas I don't have that. And do you know what? There's something else I've realized. I've got quite big forearms. And again, there's something else that throws the physique off. Because my forearms are large. Therefore, proportionally, my upper arm doesn't look as big. Like, yeah. even small details are out, you know? Yeah, this is the same way. Like, for, the, the bigger your forearm is, yeah. that's going to that's gonna make a... a, a well... If you're like Flex Lewis forearms, but his his forearms are short. Yeah, yeah. But he, but he's so ridiculous in the upper arm that it's okay. Yeah, you know, well, he's fucking five foot nothing, isn't he? And like, but yeah, someone of my height with big forearms. Oh man, I'm fucked. I'm fucked. So uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. What man. did you um? Because I sent you the question, didn't I? The um, you versus Craig versus Dan. Yes. Last week. So obviously we, we answered it on the podcast last week. Um you watched it. I did, I did. I was a little bit nervous. I put yeah. it on, yeah, because you don't know what anyone's gonna say. You're a little bit like oh. um, but yeah, no, I watched it with you boys. Um I how, how do I feel about it? Like, first off, all of you were pretty respectful, like that was really nice. So I'm not saying it wouldn't be, but yeah, it was like none of it, I didn't take offense to anything, like I get it all. But what I will say is this recency bias. I truly believe this is a thing. So my last showing was not one of my best. In fact, it was one of my worst. People are judging me of that because that's what's most recent in their mind. Yeah. Seeing me like that. 
And what's recent in their mind is also Craig winning Universe and winning two other shows. Okay? So I don't blame uh, Hilly and Dex for saying Craig. I don't blame them at all. I truly believe if I had had a corker of a fucking season as well, we would be having a different conversation. Well, see, my my thought process was your look at the universe. That's what sti- that's what's ingrained in my head when I think about your physique. If someone, you know, that's kind of what I picture. Well, well yeah, meet me at the universe, and then I had like a, a nine month off season as well on top of that. So, is it? Coulda, woulda, shoulda. I get it. I know this is all hypothetical, but I just feel like had I brought my best this year, I think, yeah. I mean, I, I would have got against break. I would have been at the universe. Um, you know, I would have stood up on that pro stage with him. Yeah. Um, I think Craig has me on certain body parts. Like, I haven't seen Craig. I saw Craig like in every single show, and he was incredible. He was very impressive. His, his his presentation this year was was really really good. And he's the best he's ever been. But I've got to be honest with you, I'd still back myself. And I'd say it to Craig. And I'd expect Craig to say it about himself too. I'd absolutely expect Craig to say, I can beat Ryan. Of course. Right? Fair play. But I'm telling you now, I think we're very, very similar in our heights and our structure. Not not body part for body part, but like size. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just an extra 10 pounds on top of it. Yeah. And I don't think... Like, and I think I've got better separation. Not, well, I hit, well, hold on. Hear me out. Hear me out. Legs, no. Craig's separation is legs is fucking phenomenal. And more quads, though. More quads. 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 Absolutely. Right. So then hamstrings, I think I can take him. Back, I can take him. Arms, I can take him. Delts, I can take him. Midsection, I can take him. Craig, absolutely, without question, has me on chest and quad detail. Yeah. <clears throat> so um I know that it's not like judged that way. It's judged on the no. overall package, right? But which I'm yeah, just, I'm just saying. Um I, I think if I'd had a really good season, I think that the answer might have been different. But what 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 what, what did you think about that? What they the guys said their thing? Well that, that that's that's is pretty much what you said. Like I my answer was kind of like I, I backed you over Dan and Greg for the reason that you've done it longer, you've done more shows. Um, Craig, Craig actually started a year before me. But Craig have, started you've done more shows than him, haven't you? I think we're very similar. Very similar. See, I always thought you've done like way, way more. Yeah, you have to cut, don't quote me on that one. But Craig started in 2014. I started in 2015. I think he's done about yeah. 15 shows. I've done 17. And, and obviously, age being a factor, like. Because he's a little bit older than you, isn't he? Yeah, he's 41. So, how old is he? 41. Right. So, obviously, you've still got, like, six years on him. Yeah. So, in that time, I mean, how much has he improved from 35 to, to 41? You know, quite a lot. So, you've got that room for improvement. I think the question is if we, if you were to step on stage now, uh, which in that in that way that wouldn't wouldn't really apply, but in the in that same sort of way, I said right, they both get in shape. Um, but given that you're heavier, and and the, the body parts that, like like the back for example, like the back is half of the judging, you know. I think the back is is massively important. Yeah, because so I guess in, I... Oh, in the lineup that he was in, he won. But obviously, it, it it's different if you stand next to someone that's kind of like that's got similar strengths to him. How does that fare? Like um, the way they judged the Olympia last year. Obviously, the top three were all kind of similar. You didn't have like someone that's like like Andrew Jack, for example, in in the top three. Like, how would that fare? How would that? Who, who was it? It was Hardy, Nick, Hardy, and Nick, Derek. and Derek. Which they all fit yeah, 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 similar stature. Yeah, similar height and yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, do you know what? It's funny because me and Craig, like, we are similar, but we're also not. Like, we've got really different physiques, even though we're, like, the same size, the same, similar weight, you know? Yeah. It's fucking, I don't know, man. I think if I came off like I did uh, in my show, Craig would absolutely beat me. No doubt. Craig Craig was phenomenal this year, and he deserved oh, everything. Yeah. He deserved everything he got. 
absolutely. He was he was really fucking impressive. But I have to back myself, as I say. It's not it's no knock on Craig. I consider Craig is literally my fucking best pal. It's no knock on Craig. It's just I, I got to back myself. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I guess I know how Dan feels because Dan is feeling really gutted that he didn't come in. How he yeah. Wanted, so right? what? So what? What do you? What do you make? What? What do you say about Dan? How does Dan feel in that comparison? Yeah. So um, well, Dan at the Universe was a bit off. I don't think he was as off as he thinks. Because you know what? When he when I saw his post and he's going to watch this, well, I don't know if he will. He'll probably go fuck off. I was way off. But I was expecting something way worse based on what he was saying. He said the day before, didn't he? Do you remember? Well, we saw him. We saw him that morning, and when he took his top off, he was pumping yeah. up because they had it in at the universe. They had like an open pump up area, so you could see everyone. Yeah. And it was like you you looked at him and you're like, oh, he's not even off. It it no exactly. It didn't look as bad as he thought, in my opinion. Um, but he's obviously got his own opinion on it, and that's fair enough. But I think he looked pretty fucking good. He he was. I think his placing was fair. I think fourth was about right. Uh, Chris Swan was third, and the other dude from Classic was second. See that guy from Classic? He was soft, but the structure was so good. And I think he, was, he didn't because he had to pump up twice, didn't he? I don't think he was tight. If he had added like another three weeks of biting, I think he would have been a real problem for even Craig. Oh, I think so. Yeah, he 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 was. He was probably put together better than anyone on the stage, but he just wasn't conditioned enough. Craig had him. Craig had him quite comfortably, to be honest. Because he had size, he had he had structure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, what didn't help is he had to pump up twice because he, he wanted to do classic, but they pulled him out of classic and put him in the open. Um, so that probably didn't help. Uh, that's it. I, I'm not saying he would have beaten Craig. I still actually think Craig would have won. I just I'm saying he would have closed that gap because he was really. Good. I looked at I looked at his Instagram and he, he's fucking good. He's yeah, really no good. No doubt. No. Uh, but yeah, so go back to Dan. Um, I, I feel gutted for Dan because I know how much that meant to him. And I know that he's, he put himself through the ringer psychologically. So I feel gutted for him, you know, because I know that he didn't present how he wanted to. Um, his, so then his look at the Southwest was very, very good. I don't know how different it was in the universe. I don't know how... Have you, well, have you seen? Have you seen? Yeah, we didn't see the southwest, but how would that? How would that condition have fared compared to how else? How everyone else was conditioned at the at the universe? Because uh, you've got to bear that in mind too, because that was four four weeks. Yeah, it was like four weeks after. Before, yeah, the universe was four weeks after the southwest, maybe five. I don't know. Five, yeah, five. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't think Dan has Craig yet. Just don't. Even Dan at his best, I don't think he's Craig. Could Dan have leapfrogged Chris? Maybe. Could he have leapfrogged ever do? Maybe. Do you know what, Chris? Chris, actually, I love Chris, right? And I didn't, I just didn't expect, because he didn't post a whole lot and he didn't, he didn't post so much like going into the show. Like we were always talking on the, on the group chat, but he was kind of like quiet and I tell you what, when me and Riz watched him at the pump up, I was thinking because Riz was like, he said to me like, "Look, don't count Chris out." He said he's look at, he's gonna look really good because Chris is trained by Matt, who trains with Riz, Matt yeah. Farmer. Yeah, Matt. Oh yeah, I oh, usually. So, so. Um, Riz obviously had seen him the entire time, and he's 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 like, "No, trust me, he's gonna be on." And I was kind of thinking, "Oh, yeah." And then, uh, like, on, on, but almost like his pictures don't do him justice. You know, he kind of, he looks a lot slimmer in his pictures and you just think he's not going to have the size. When he came out and when I watched him pump up, I was like, what the fuck? How, fuck me. He uh, did look big. He did look big. He and he's got massive, amazing, he? He he's huge. got amazing quad sweeps as well, isn't he? The way yeah. he quad sweep out, they look fucking good. Chris, out of everyone at the unit, at that show, impressed me the most. Oh. You know because, what was nice for me as well? Because I see Craig. In a way that no one else sees Craig. Sees Craig. So you see, you saw him based on photos, and I'm like, no, wait till you see him in person. I remember saying it to you, like in person, he is impressive as fuck. Like he's big, he's a big dude. Um, and on that stage, which I don't think anyone would have necessarily put money on, even though I did. Um, you know, he made Dan look smaller than what Dan was because of his well, stature. I, I kind of pictured what for Craig to look a little bit how you look, because obviously I've seen you. 
compete loads. I've seen you in shape. I've seen you backstage. So peaked. And it, yeah, you take up lots of space. So that's kind of what I expected of Craig. And that's kind of what... But, but he, I would even go as far as say he's even like thickness, right? Because we were doubting thickness. We thought, thinking Dan had the thickness over everyone. But mm. I wouldn't necessarily say I saw it that way. When you were looking at that lineup, the eye was drawn to Craig pretty much straight away. And it was drawn to that other dude. Do you remember? Because we were sat there, right? We were saying Craig and him. I'm pretty sure we, we kind of had, that was the consensus of everyone. So, yeah, I think I think we, we because you, you were like, um, you asked me, you were like, what, what do you reckon? And like, I, I can't even remember, like, what would have set Dan apart at the Southwest compared to the, to the universe? That Dan looked a lot more muscular, a lot fuller, I, I know. I, I think I know the answer. I think I know the answer because it depends who you stood next to. Right. There's no disrespect because the guy who came second in the overall, he might, you know, he won the class, the bodybuilder medium. Which? No, yeah, second. Yeah, he came second. Yeah, yeah. He came so to Nathan, yeah, yeah. So he's fucking good, but he's just not big enough, like, like size wise, like structure. He's so conditioned. He's like he's a really good bodybuilder. But that's why Dan stood out because he stood next to guys who were considerably smaller than him. Well, then when you stand 250 pounds, six foot three, Craig next to him, all of a sudden that size is is lost a little bit. Yeah, thing is, Dan said he was two in the high, in like low two fifties. I think he said two fifty. Oh fuck me, really? Or wow. oh, two fifty three? Yeah, because he, he I can't even, I can't remember exactly, but he said he was like either two fifty one or two fifty three at on stage. Wow. That's what you said to me. That's that's pretty crazy. Well, I don't know, but like you know, we, we were that sat there. I, I hate the fact that because you know what, to be honest as well, I'm going to say this on pod, the podcast. Since the show, Dan doesn't doesn't really speak to me anymore. I feel like I pissed him off maybe with the podcast or something, and I I, I need him to know I'm not slagging him off. I think Dan's a, a really nice dude. I think I'm gutted for him, and I, and, I, and I thought we were cool. But I feel like he's funny now. So whenever I'm saying this shit, I hate that it comes across that I'm trying to like shit on him because I'm fucking not. I'm no. not at all. I, I don't. I don't want to create enemies. I don't want to do that. I think we I should think all respect said, one another because we all do the same shit. We should all like be in it together. I think he said he was in a high two thirties, um, kind of like that week out, wow. and then. Well, stood in that lineup. There was a lot of big dudes, so it, it's you know, it's, yeah, I yeah. Know. But yeah, overall, like it was a it was a good show. It was a good show. Um, it was really good, yeah. It was really good. And, um, there was a lot of guys that like looked really impressive, and uh, obviously Craig played like to win a show like that. That's big. That was amazing. Do you think uh, if Dan had come in the Southwest shape, where, where would his basic have been? If Dan had come in the same shape as the Southwest, I don't think he would have been conditioned enough because he was. I think he was in the high 250s of that show. I can't say, because I, I don't know what, what weight, I can't exactly say what his weight was, but I think he had more to come off. Okay, let me, let me, let me rephrase. Right? Let me rephrase. If Dan had come in fully, fully beat, fully beat at that Universe show, where would he have placed? I mean, it's hard to say, because like he was up against... What I mean, what what do we mean by fully peaked? Like how off was Dan? Well, yeah. Uh, show like what what are we talking about? Which show are we basing it off of? The the Southwest. So go go on Southwest and then go with an extra five weeks of dieting where nothing really goes wrong. Like you continue on a, on the same trajectory. Where does that Dan place? I think it's hard to say because I didn't we didn't see him at the Southwest either. Just so, based, on, based on the photos, based on the photos. Hmm. Don't tiptoe around the answer. Give me your answer. Look, I I don't know. I don't know because like I don't sit on the fence. Come on, really give me the answer. Everyone. Huh? Don't sit on the fence. Give me the answer. I think if he was still in that shape about five Southwest, weeks on, but five weeks on. That's what I'm saying. So if he's if he turned up at the Southwest, uh, the same shape he was at the Southwest, that would probably be the same placing, I'd say. But what I'm saying is then an extra five weeks where he's like a bit leaner. Mm. I don't know. I, I, I think Dan 
could have probably maybe he would have got Chris. So I, just, I, I, oh, it's hard. It's a hypothetical. It's just a bit of fun, I guess. But I don't know. I, I, I would say, yeah, like... he, he could potentially have gone up a couple of places. But my point is, I don't think he's got Craig yet. I think Craig is on another level now. So to go back to the question, who's going to be a pro of me, Craig, or Dan? I think probably, given his age and given his height and structure, Dan has the highest potential, probably. Right. But right now, I think. Craig can beat him, and I think I can beat him right now. That's not me hating. That's not me hating. I still think Dan's got a higher potential than me. Yeah, he's I mean, I, by the time by the time he's thirty, fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I said, ass. I said, obviously, I thought that you could probably. I said, um, in my opinion, you could beat both of them now. Mm. Mm. Yeah, just because I, I think the condition that you hit, Craig doesn't hit the same. Like that, that detail. Do you know what Craig's a funny one because he does. Do you know, like part of him is and part of him isn't. So his quads, are, like other than Lubos who won the show, yeah, there's not really anyone who's got quad detail like Craig. It's, yeah, it's but I think phenomenal. quad detail is just one muscle. I know, the, I know. Um, yeah. I think the arms, like your arms and your shoulder, like shoulders, even fucking traps. Your fucking traps get straight. It's like, you know. Yeah, I guess it just it, it presents itself differently on every, every physique, doesn't it? Like condition. Yeah, that could be it. And I think the back as well. The back is the biggest thing because I think the back is, I mean, that's half of the fucking shots. Yeah, yeah. He, do you know what? Do you remember Craig on stage? Do you remember his, his chest durations when he was pulling certain poses, man? That looked fucking great. Like that was really, really impressive. Again, something that really made him stand out from everyone else. He was putting that most muscular with hands on hips. And he was like, oh. Well, your chest strides as well. It does, but my chest is so shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just that your, your chest it's just, is... It's just half the size of Craig's. But, um, but yeah. yeah, no, much. Yeah, my chest straight. Yeah, sure, sure. But um, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, it's all, a bit, it's all a bit of fun, you know. And the annoying thing for me is that people take it too seriously. Like, like I'm involved in it and I'm not taking it seriously. It's just... It's just I do believe that recency bias plays a part. I think if we're all peaked and we're all like how we should be, then it's a different conversation. That's all I think. Yeah. I think until you see that, until you see people on stage, everyone everyone on stage, it's really hard to say. But I think with, say with people like Dan, it's really hard to judge it because, like I said, on at the show that he was at, um, I think had he come in at the two high two thirties, I think he would have stood a better chance. No doubt. Than, no doubt about it. Then he would have, like with the crazy carb ups and things like that. So I think sometimes, and I kind of thought that. I kind of thought because he, he was looking really good based on the pictures and all that, that that I that I saw leading up to the show. And I kind of thought, are they going to do some crazy carb up? And they kind of pretty much did what. I don't, and again, I don't want to speak for Dan and what they've kind of done, but what I did for for my peak. Yeah. So go, I, going mad and then try and undo what they did. I think they went crazier because I think what he said mean? it on. Uh, I think he said it on a post actually that they use like injectable Lasix and stuff. That's crazy stuff. It's just such a risk, isn't it? I think like, if said, it, I, imagine that on a... Imagine if Dan had just gone in how he looked like on, let's say, the Tuesday. Yeah. So the, 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 the show was Sunday. So let's say he just went in as he did Tuesday, Wednesday. Imagine what that would have been. No fucking about at all. None. Just on the day of the show, maybe a few cards just to look a little bit full. Or maybe the evening before, for example. Mm -hmm. And not like thousands and thousands of cards. But like. Yeah. So an interesting one. So I gave a, a lift home. Uh, well, I lift to his uh, hotel. Do you know the guy who won the PCA Pro Show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know him, but yeah, I, I yeah. You saw him in my car, so he was just hovering around and he needed a lift. So I was like, dump him. I gave him a lift last year as well. So <clears throat> he's a really nice dude. And I, he explained to me what he did. And bearing in mind, his condition is off the fucking chart. His condition is better than 99.9% of any bodybuilder. Fuck me. And he explained. All right, he never really... Oh, and I, uh, so he explained what he did. And he... Yeah. <laughs> you right? 
No, it's not. Yeah, well, yeah. Whatever. Just don't have your tits out. Um, so, yeah, he explained what he did. He did, um, like, moderate. Everything was moderate. He never really went below 250 or 300 grams of carbs throughout the whole time. So then, then the day of the show, so not the day before, the day of the show, he did uh, 100 grams of carbs every three hours. That was what he did, which is a strange thing. But anyway, every hey, was it three hours or two hours? It was three, yeah. So he'd wake up at 6 a.m. and he'd have 100 grams of carbs. Then 9 a.m., 100. Then 12, 12 p.m., 100. And three, from what, like 100. rice? Yeah, from, from clean sources. So we ended up having like 500 grams of carbs on the day. That's it. Yeah, I mean, look, I think when you're that condition, putting in 100 grams of carbs is nothing. But, but listen, I'm not saying that that's now proof. I'm not saying, oh, well, he did it, therefore everyone should do it. What I'm saying is, how, what are the chances that something's going to go wrong if you do that? Basically zero. You might come a tiny bit flat, but you're going to be conditioned. As long as you're in condition... What? So chances... that, like, basically running your your prep diet until yep. that Saturday, and yep. then on Sunday, just putting in 100 grams of carbs. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. I'm sorry. I, I misquoted him. The night before, he had an extra, like, 200 grams as well. So he'd have his normal prep diet, which was about, let's say, uh, 300 grams of carbs. Then he'd have an extra 200 just before he went to bed. Then he did that. On the and day. mind you, how much does he weigh on stage? 104 kilos. Right, so he's like 220, 230. Yeah, 230 ish, yeah. So he's a big bodybuilder, right? That's what Yeah, because right. if he filled up, he could easily be 245. Yeah. And he's like, probably six... look, that, he'll probably look worse if he did that. 100. That's, that's kind of what I'm getting at. So, and he, he wins shows because he out conditions everyone. His, his condition, he makes everyone look tough. And, and as, as I say, it's only an anecdote and it's not proof. But it's just interesting to hear that that perspective, because I mean, for me, I'd rather get it right, like know that I'm going to get it right, rather than roll the dice. Yeah, like what happened to me this year with Martin and fucking what happened to Dan. Well, this is the thing. Like a guy in my in my gym is competing this weekend. He competed last weekend, and they, he did like two gram two six hundred gram of carb days um, the days before on the Friday and the Saturday. He competed on Sunday. I said to him, "You you're like." He's like uh, 150 pounds. So light guy, you know? I'm like, you don't need... Oh, I sent you pictures of him to, for you to to ask... To, for you, for me to ask him if he suits physique or bodybuilding. That was oh, yeah, yeah, I remember, him, yeah. Right? So he doesn't need that. I said to him, look, if you look really fucking good on, a, on like th Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, don't fucking go mental. Yeah. Just go in as you are. 100%. Some of that size as well. Now, how much yeah. how much glycogen has he really got? Not a lot. Not, Not a lot. lot. So I said to him, you probably don't even need carbs. Like if it's like a mental thing, like where you want to, like you think, oh, you know, put two hundred grams of carbs in. Well, I agree. I agree. You know, I, I, I'm not saying that you, no, people should do no carbs because actually I think it's quite hard to get a proper pump. Yeah. Right? So I'm not saying no carbs. What I am saying is go fucking modest. You can be super, super conditioned and just have enough carbs that you can get a pump. When you've got a pump, you know how much of a difference that makes. Yeah. And, and the that's all you need. Like, that's all you fucking need. People will say, oh, you know, I um, I went and had like, you know, whatever, binge after the show. And they're like, I looked, I looked really good at the gym the next day. I'm like, no, you, you get a workout and you get a pump in the gym. That's different to a stage look. If you go like that on stage, you're going to look like fucking garbage. Yeah, it's different because this 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 being full is great. But when you spill, yeah. it's on it's on your back and on your ass, isn't it? Yeah. It is. This looks amazing. We've got like when you spill, this looks fucking ginormous. Like if you look at my stage shots, my chest and belts were massive. What's that, mate? I've got a, I've got a shoot off soon, mate. I'm uh, mm -hmm. I'm going with Amy to get a massage. So I'm gonna have to call time on it, mate. Yeah, yeah. But we'll do it again. Um, we won't wait as uh, long next time. I feel like we didn't even cover that much, do you? Oh, we've done like an hour and a half. I know, I know. So, yeah. Yeah, all right, mate. I'll catch you all right, later, then. all right? All right, speak to you soon. See you, mate.